I am Vaibhav Shivastav from Vaibhav E-Learning Academy. Today we are going to continue our topic Anatomy of Flying Man. This is our part number 2. In today's video, we will be discussing about the topics the tissue system, epidermal tissue system, vascular tissue system and ground tissue system. In the previous video, we have learnt about what are the types of tissues depending on their location and function. Depending on their function and today we will be discussing about the types of tissue depending on their functions and location specifically. So we will see what are the different types of tissue systems. So let us start with the flow chart. Now there are three main types of tissue system. Earlier we learnt about two types which were primary and secondary. In today's video we will be learning about a different classification. So here we have tissues system. Now here system means a group of tissues which is not an organ but it is performing a function together. So tissue system means a group of tissues which perform particular function but they are not an organ. Here tissue systems are of three types. First one is epidermal. Second one is vascular. And third one is ground. Epidermal tissue system, vascular tissue system and ground tissue system. Epidermal tissue system has root epidermis, shoot epidermis and leaf epidermis. And root epidermis has root hairs. Shoot epidermis has trichomes and leaf epidermis has stomata. This was about epidermis. Then we have vascular. Vascular tissue system, xylem. Xylem and phloem actually. Xylem and phloem are known as vascular tissue system and this is differentiation is due to their location. Vascular tissue system. These are of vascular tissue system. It means that vascular bundles and there are two bundles, xylem and phloem. On the basis of how the xylem and phloem are arranged, that is known as vascular tissue system. Now, arrangement can be of two types. One is radial, one is conjoint. Now, in conjoint also, there is open and close. These are the classification in vascular. In ground tissue system, we have so many things. Cortex, hypodermis, then we have pericycle, after that we have pith, etc. So we will be learning about all these things in our today's video. Tissue system is actually of three types, epidermal, vascular and ground tissue. Epidermal tissues are of they are in three areas that is root epidermis, shoot epidermis and leaf epidermis. See location. So they are in the root, they are in the shoot, they are in the leaf. Actually shoot in the sense we can usually, usually take this as stem. So stem epidermis, leaf epidermis on their location. Root epidermis it, it has special features that is root hair. Stem epidermis has specially trichomes and leaf epidermis has specially stomata. Then we have vascular. Vascular bundles or vascular tissue system is of two types, radial and conjoint. In radial also, we can take two types actually, tetrarch and polyarch. Tetrarch and polyarch and conjoint is of open and closed. How is this related to location? It is because radial, we will study later that radial is present in the roots and conjoint is present in the stems. So that is why it is on the location. Then we have ground tissue system. In ground tissue system, ground tissue system means the remaining everything except epidermal tissue system and vascular tissue system. Everything remaining is known as ground tissue system. So these are cortex, hypodermis, pericycle, pith. We will be learning about this in today's video and even in the next video where we will be discussing about transactions. In today's video only it is about tissue system. So this was all about the introduction. Now let us start with the first type of tissue system that is epidermal tissue system. Now epidermis. As the name suggests, epidermis means the outermost layer or the upper layer. In our body, skin is the epidermal tissue. 
So here, the, the first one is epidermal tissue system. Now, epidermal tissue system, as the name suggests, epidermis means the outer covering. So it is present at the outer most layer of the plant and where is it present it is present in root stem and leaf now it is present at outermost layer of the plant they are parenchymatous we learned about what is parenchyma in the previous video they are closely packed they are having large vacuole vacuole what is vacuole vacuole is actually a large space in the cell that, that can actually help even in conduction or it can even help in storage of food we have learned about this in the cell video large vacuole and peripheral cytoplasm peripheral cytoplasm it means that if it has a large vacuole then the cytoplasm inside the epidermal cells will be shifted to the corners that is why it is known as peripheral cytoplasm and one more point that they are usually elongated now epidermal cells are like this and they are having large vacuole they are tightly packed they are closely packed they do not have intercellular spaces they are parenchymatous as in the previous video we said that parenchyma cells can have intercellular space or cannot have intercellular space here mostly they do not have intercellular space they are closely packed they are present at the outermost layer of the plant they are present out of the root stem and leaf so epidermal tissue system mostly epidermis is also covered by cuticle here one more point also it is covered by cuticle except roots so except roots now what is cuticle this is the epidermis cuticle it is a layer which is arranged like this on the epidermis this cuticle prevents water loss now how this cuticle prevents water loss this cuticle is actually a substance which is present on the epidermis which can prevent the water loss that is they can prevent transpiration so it is a layer on the top transpiration means water loss water loss is due to the sunlight if there is a thick layer between the water losing agent uh, like the cells and the sunlight if there is a thick medium then the water will not be able to lose so that is why cuticle prevents water loss that is it prevents transpiration it has large vacuole and peripheral cytoplasm as you can see the cytoplasm is shifted at the corners and it is usually elongated this cells you can see they are elongated so this was the basic about what are epidermal tissue systems now in epidermal tissue system there are three epidermal tissue systems one is root epidermis one is shoot uh, stem epidermis and one is leaf epidermis so let us start with the first one root epidermis now root epidermis as we wrote all the features it also has all the same features but here one extra thing is it has root hairs now what are root hairs root hairs are unicellular they are single cell present only in roots they help in water and mineral absorption they help in water and mineral absorption and even we can say that roots do not have cuticle 
why do they do not have cuticle it is because cuticle is present in the areas where the uh, sunlight falls more on those areas so that cuticle is present and in the root there is no sunlight because root is in the underground so that is why they do not have a cuticle now root hairs are unicellular in structure so they are something like this they are not separate structures they are modification of some epidermal cells they are modification of some epidermal cells they are not like a separate structure so for example this is the epidermis of the root there are some outgrowths that we call them this as root hair this was all about the root so root hairs they are unicellular that is they have single cells they are present only in roots they help in water and mineral absorption of course there is soil over here so what they do is they take the water and minerals and they send to inside the epidermis now they are even modification of some epidermal cells as you can see this is an outgrowth there is no separate area over here actually this is an outgrowth then they do not have cuticle roots so this was about root next one we have stem now after root epidermis we have the second one that is stem epidermis now these stem epidermis also have some uh, certain distinctive structures they have some certain unique structure which are present only in stem that is trichomes trichomes are present now what are these trichomes these trichomes are multicellular structures multicellular structures they may be soft or stiff soft or stiff i'll explain it they may be branched or unbranched they may be secretory and they help in reducing transpiration this is about trichomes stems also have stomata at some places even stems has stomata in some places and adult stems have lenticels or lenticles this is an adult this we will be discussing during the secondary group so now stems they have trichomes now what is trichome if we draw a stem epidermis over here even these are actually uh, let me write one more point over here even they are modification of epidermal cells you can say modification or you can say an outgrowth so this is the epidermis of the stem for example there are some structures like this these structures are known as trichomes they are multicellular so they can have something like this so this is what they are multicellular structure they can be soft or stiff soft in the sense they may be soft to touch stiff means they might be tight to touch they are branched or unbranched here this one is branched but there are some trichomes which are just like this they are these are unbranched this is branched and this is unbranched so they might be branched or unbranched they may be secretory they can secrete some substances they secrete uh, i'm not they don't secrete them they help in reducing transpiration how do they help in reducing transpiration what they do is because of their multicellular nature because of their branched nature they can be they increase the sur their surface area is large due to the large surface area they cover up the outer part of the stem uh, stem due to that the transpiration is reduced even stem has 
cuticle. Stem also has cuticle and even leaves have cuticle. They may be help, they help in reducing transpiration. They also have stomata at some places. Yes, stems in some places have even stomata for gaseous exchange. Adult stems have lenticles. Lenticles are small openings which are present in the woody part of the stems. Because it is woody and uh, if it is wood, they won't be able to do gaseous exchange. That is why they have some small openings known as lenticles. Now, these trichomes are the modification of epidermal cells, as same as the roots. After this stem, we have the third one and the last one in ground, oh sorry, epidermal tissue, that is the leaf. And it is one of the most important ones. Now the third one, leaf. Leaf also have one structure that we all know. In leaf, the distinctive structures are stomata. Now to understand stomata, we have to see the figure of stomata. Now how does stomata look? So here, stomata is something like this. These are the guard cells. cells. So this is the stomata. So this is the stomata. Now, what are the parts? Let us label it. This is the stomatal pore. This is the guard cell. These both are the guard cells. This is subsidiary cells. This figure is of stomata. These are subsidiary cells. These are uh, thickenings and this is cellulosic fibers. These are the different parts of the stomata. These are chloroplasts. Now, here, as you can see here, there is chloroplast. In epidermal tissue system, till now we have discussed about roots and stem. In roots and stem epidermis, we never talked about chloroplast being present in them. But here in leaf epidermis, chloroplast is present. Not, not in the epidermis, but in a part of epidermis that is the guard cells. Now, if you see how was tomato part of epidermal cells, these are the epidermal cells. So these are leaf epidermis. This is the stomata. Now in the whole leaf epidermis there is no chloroplast. But here only there are chloroplasts present. So what, what areas of the stomata are they present? They are present only in the guard cells. So this is one important point that epidermis does not have chloroplast but only in the guard cells of the stomata chloroplasts are present. Now, what are the meaning of the different parts of stomata? Here we have the stomatal pore. Stomatal pore is the opening for gaseous exchange. This is the opening for gaseous exchange. Then we have guard cells. Guard cells are pin shaped and regulate opening and closing of stomata. So the guard cells are being shaped and they regulate opening and closing of the stomata. How do they regulate opening and closing? Actually these guard cells they can become either turgid or flaccid. Turgid in the sense water, when the content of water is increasing then the cell is known as turgid cell. So when the stomata has to 
go pen so what happens is the water starts coming inside the guard cells when the water starts entering the guard cells the guard cells expand they become bean shaped and due to that bean shape the stomatal pore is prominently visible that is why they are open and when you have to close them how do you close them you remove the water from the guard cells when you remove water from the guard cells they become flaccid they start to shrink down when they shrink they close the opening that is how they regulate the opening and closing of stomata stomatal pore actually here stomatal pore and these guard cells are bean shaped no yeah bean shaped in monocot sorry dicot and dumbbell shaped in grass how are the dumbbell shaped in grass they are something like this these are the guard cells and that is the pore so this is about guard cells now what are cellulosic fibers they are first of all arranged radially and they are fibers ray fibers made of of course cellulose then what is chloroplast chloroplast the green color thing this actually in the guard cells this i'll explain later subcellulary cells what is subcellulary cells cells to modify uh, some epidermal cells near the stomata modify and those cells are known as subcellulary cells so this was all about the stomata now stomata has many parts first part is now one more part that is stomatal appendage apparatus not appendage apparatus so these stomatal pore guard cells and subsidiary cells these three combine together to form this uh, stomatal apparatus apparatus means an organ so stomata is also an organ you can say but they are made up of stomatal pore and uh, guard cells and subsidiary cells combination of everything is known as stomatal apparatus stomata is made up of many parts one is the stomatal pore through which the gaseous exchange takes place then we have guard cells which are bean shaped in dicot and uh, dumbbell shaped in grasses they help in opening and closing of the stomatal pore then we have subsidiary cells the cells which are epidermal and they are modified to form some functions that is known as subsidiary cells chloroplast is present only in the guard cells of stomata then these are the ray fibers that is made up of cellulose and they are arranged radially this is one very important question in option there might be tangential radial or longitudinal answer is radially and that's all this is all about stomata now one more important point is that in the guard cells the inner wall wall is thick thicker than outer wall this is because there are some depositions of some substances i think tannins or cellulose over here so this was all about the stomata now in leaf this is one distinctive structure that is stomata which is present only in the leaves at stomata cuticle they also have cuticle except stomata if you think logically stomata is the area where gaseous exchange takes place and if you keep cuticle at stomata gaseous exchange won't take place so this was all about leaf they have stomata they have cuticles and uh, they they have chloroplast at guard cells so this was epidermal tissue systems in the leaf root and stem now after epidermal tissue system we have the second type of tissue system that is known as vascular tissue system second one
vascular tissue system. Now this vascular tissue system has two main important bundles. One is known as xylem bundle and one is known as phloem bundle. So here, xylem tissue system are known as xylem bundles. Xylem, see xylem has four different types of cells which we learned in the previous video. Xylem has tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. Now they combine to form one xylem and many xylems together are known as xylem bundles. Similarly phloem tissues are known as phloem bundles. So xylem bundles and phloem bundles. Now the arrangement. of xylem bundle and phloem bundle in the transaction is known as vascular tissue system. So the pattern how are the xylem bundles and phloem bundles present inside the uh, transaction that arrangement is known as vascular tissue system. Now this vascular tissue system are as we said they are of three types. One is uh, not two types, one is radial and one is conjoint. So let us see the first one that is radial. First one radial vascular bundles. So here radial vascular bundles it means that xylem and phloem are arranged at alternate radii. Xylem and phloem are arranged at alternate radius. What does this mean? Xylem and phloem are arranged at alternate radius. And one more point you can say present only in roots. So the xylem and phloem are arranged at alternate radius. What is the meaning of this alternate radius? So for example, this is the root of a plant. You are cutting this like this. This is known as transaction. When you cut it like this, for example, this is the root. When you cut the root like this and see from the top, it shows something like this. Now here, the outer cells, these outer cells are called as epidermis. We will be learning detail about this in the next video. Epidermis, then they have cortex over here. This is the endodermis. Inside the endodermis, there is a layer of cells called as pericycle. Now here, Xylem and phloem are arranged at alternate radius. It means that this is xylem and these are phloems. This center part is known as pith. So actually this is one radius, these four are one radius and this four are one radii. So xylem, this is xylem, this is phloem and this structure is about dicot root. So as they said that they are present only in root. So in dicot root if you cut the cross section and if you see, you see that the xylems are at one uh, radius and the phloems are at one radius. So this is known as radial vascular bundle. We will be learning about this in detail. Why is this one? Why is the front one large, bigger one and why is the back one smaller one? We will be discussing that in the next video. Which is about transaction in dicot root. After this, this, uh, this is the only thing about radial vascular bundle. Now one more important point is, they can be tetrarch or polyar. Tetrarch as in dicot root. As you can see over here, there is one, two, three, four, four xylem and four phloem. That is why these are known as tetrarch. And polyarch are present in monocot root. If you see monocot root like this, so many bundles will be there. So this is about radial vascular bundles. Now the second type after radial vascular bundle is 
conjoint vascular membrane. Second one, conjoint vascular bundle. Now, what is conjoint vascular bundle? Now, as the name suggests, conjoint means they are joined together. So, xylem and phloem in the same radius. They may, may be open or closed. And how do you decide if they are open or closed? Because due to the presence of cambium, may or may not have cambium. Now what is this? So to explain this, we need one side of xylem and phloem. So for example, suppose. This is phloem and then this is xylem. Similarly, this is phloem and this is xylem. Okay. Now, in between the phloem and xylem, if there is a layer of some cells called cambium. This is known as cambium. If cambium is present, then the, these are known as open. Open conjoint vascular bundles. This is phloem and this is xylem. And if in between there is no cambium, phloem, xylem, then this is known as closed. Closed conjoint vascular bundle. So open conjoint vascular bundle and closed conjoint vascular bundles. These are present in roots. Sorry, not roots. Present in stems. In dicot stems and in monocot. Uh, not in monocot. Yeah, actually they are present in stems. Sorry, dicot and monocot stem both. So these are the cambium. Now, if there is cambium present, why do we call it as open? Now, what is cambium? Cambium is actually the Cells which perform secondary growth. Cambium is meristematic cells which perform secondary growth. So how is cambium formed? In the previous video, if you remember, that we learned that primary meristematic tissues, they will differentiate and they will form permanent meristematic uh, permanent tissues now when you have when the plant grows the permanent tissues will again undergo de differentiation de differentiation and they will form again meristematic tissues now here permanent sorry primary meristem has formed some stems in the stem there are vascular bundles in the vascular bundles there are xylem and phloem now the xylem and phloem became permanent tissues now when the plant is growing those xylem and phloem are not sufficient they need more xylem and more phloem for the conduction in the large tree. That is why secondary growth occurs. And here, between the xylem and phloem, there are some cells which undergo de-differentiation and they will form meristematic tissues. Those meristematic tissues are known as cam. The type of vascular bundle is known as bicollateral vascular bundle. Bicollateral vascular bundle. What is bicollateral? Bicollateral means This will be bicollateral. This is known as bicollateral. This is phloem, this is phloem, and this is xylem. So when there is phloem on the both side of the xylem, then that kind of vascular bundle is known as bicollateral vascular bundle. Now there are two types of bicollateral vascular bundle, open or closed. So in bicollateral vascular bundle, the main question that will be asked is, describe the order of, order of the cells present from top to bottom, from outer side to inner side. So first will be outer phloem, 
then here if there is a vascular bundle then the, uh, sorry if there is a cambium so this will be outer cambium then xylem then here if there is any cambium inner cambium and then phloem so phloem two phloem outer phloem inner phloem two cambiums outer cambium inner cambium and in the between is xylem so this was about bicollateral vascular bundle now this was all about the vascular tissue system vascular tissue system helps in conduction of water and minerals and nutrients water minerals from xylem and nutrients from phloem so this was about by a uh, vascular tissue system so after vascular tissue system now we have to move to the last part of the video that is ground tissue system the third one ground tissue system now in ground tissue system we have to take for now for example we will be taking one transection the outer cells are epidermis these cells center cells are known as uh, not center the peripheral cells are known as cortex or you can say cortical cells this is known as endodermis inside the endodermis this is known as pericycle after pericycle these are the vascular bundles these are some medullary rays and this center part is known as pith these are vascular bundles and these are some inter uh, in between the vascular bundles there are some cells you can even call it as medullary cells so here these are the things which are present inside a dicot root now what is ground tissue system now if you take ground tissue system take a transection this is a transaction in that if you subtract a subtract epidermis so you subtract epidermis and you subtract vascular tissues it means that you subtract vascular bundle the result which you obtain is ground tissue this is the ground tissue cortex endodermis pericycle pith these all the cells are known as the ground tissue ground tissues are actually space filling cells space filling cells they may be parenchymatous in vascular bundles vascular tissues may be parenchymatous or sclerenchymatous because in xylem there are even sclerenchymatous cells so these may be parenchymatous colon chymatus and scleren chymatus this was just everything about the ground tissue system now in ground tissue system everything except in transaction epidermis minus vascular tissues is equal to the ground tissue system now this was all about the tissue systems so i hope you have enjoyed this video in this video we have learnt about three types of tissue epidermal tissue epidermal tissue system vascular tissue system and the ground tissue system So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, like this video, subscribe to this channel if you are new to this channel. See you next time in the next video. In the next video, we will be learning about the transaction of monocot dicot roots. So I hope you will enjoy that video as well. See you next time in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.